we here at Radio News 1 Britain would like to extend our congratulations to Sir Bentley, the dog of the king who has received a knighthood for his wonderful actions of chasing his own tail. So cute. In worldwide news, war, as our sources tell me, has been declared on germs. Germs, I see, are small bacteria within your own home. How dreadful. Our partner company, King, has declared war on the germs for invading Poland. Last night I sat upon the high black rock by the beach. The sea were as still as it could be. A cool and gentle breeze stirred my air, carrying the voices of stray gulls. In my years on this island, that rock has become my accustomed seat, its surface now polished smooth. Often I would sit there and I would take my meals, watching the sea or the stars as I eat and drink. It is a small pleasure, but if ever I left this island, I would miss it dearly. It were too dark to watch the ripples on the sea, except when the beacon of the lighthouse shone its light that way. But last night I was not watching the sea. My eyes were cast upon the stars, twinkling beacons hanging in the black. I ate my dinner and I watched the stars, and I felt a peace roll over me. A contentment I had never felt before. Solitude is not such a terrible thing when you look at the stars. The unknown is not quite so terrifying in their light. What I'm doing is not for nothing, and even if it will not save my life, at least it gives my life meaning. It gives me a purpose. Good evening. You are listening to the Switchboard, connecting all points in humanity's ongoing voyage into the unknown. I am the host, and it is 17 years since the beginning of the end. I would like to apologize for my maudlin behavior over the last two broadcasts. The loneliness was getting to me, but I believe I am past that. Earlier today, the boat came with my supplies for the next few months. 
I spoke with Amo, the man who makes the deliveries. Funny that I had never asked his name before. He came into the lighthouse for coffee and a chat. He believes he can find me a dog to join me on the island. He also brought a jar of anchovies specifically for Hemingway. Hemingway's wing is now completely healed and he can fly again. He takes great delight in swooping and fishing. Though he appears to be showing no inclination to leave the island, I can say that I'm upset by this development. I feel perhaps that I have been too cynical about my situation. I allowed myself to be overcome by the misery of this situation that I never considered doing anything about it. I do have internet connection here. I may be physically cut off from the world, but that does not mean exile must be total. I can reach out to the outside world without putting them in danger. <coughs> Emil is a friendly sort, and after our conversation today, I no longer look forward to his visits just because of the food he brings. <coughs> Sorry. The poetry of my situation is not lost on me. At night, I tend the light that shows the way home and helps to keep people safe. It is vital, if thankless work. It does not so much save lives as it does keep them from being put in danger in the first place. <coughs> During the day, I present a broadcast that helps keep people safe. <coughs> I do not know if it saves lives, but I like to believe that it helps keep them from being put in danger in the first place. <coughs> I think perhaps I can be happy here. With the help of generous donations of information by anonymous listener and the inestimable translation of work of Miss Samantha Cole, we have for now concluded our examination of the Black Freighter and its origins. <coughs> I would like to take some time to thank our anonymous benefactor for the information shared with us and especially to thank Samantha Cole for her hard work on translating Biao Xiao Ping's diary. <clears throat> With your contributions, we have been able to look deeper into the mystery <clears throat> than we have on any other on this broadcast. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ah. You both gave me hope that we can achieve similar results in the future. Oh, oh well. It's not like we're not used to it at this point. Hold on, I'll just get the signal ready. Come on.
You're listening to Spooky Simon's Variety Hour. That was Stalk Me by Venus DeVilo. I hope you stick around for the rest of the night, listeners. It's going to be spooky. <laughs> And now, for our, uh, as usual, nightly report. Thank you for listening to Season 1 of The Switchboard. We'll be back with Season 2 once it's ready. The Switchboard is a Hog and Dice production, written and directed by me, Stephen Jack Cullen, with music by Thomas O'Boyle and Kevin MacLeod. The voice of the host was Keith Byrne. The voice of Samantha Coe was Alison Marcellus. You can find out more and see our other projects at hogandice.com. We are open to your reports for Season 2, so please send your written reports or audio recordings to the host switchboard at gmail.com or tweet them directly to the host at switchboardpod. This episode's broadcast failure was performed by Killian Olry and Stephen Jack Cullen. The song was Stalk Me by Venus DeVilo. You can find out more at venusdevilo.bandcamp.com. If you're in Dublin city centre and are looking for a way to extricate the horrible supernatural parasite inhabiting your chest cavity, why not drop into the clockwork door? They have a games room, a study room, a fully stocked kitchen and a board games and reading room. You only have to pay for the time you spend there and rates start at 8 cent a minute for your first two hours. Find out more at clockworkdoor.ie. If you enjoyed today's episode... Maybe you'd also like to hear a choir of children sing the first four letters of the alphabet over and over again for the rest of eternity.